Today, guys, I'm going to be showing you guys how to get your own router and use it with Verizon Fios. Stay tuned. First thing you're going to need is one of these, a Mocha adapter. Once you have this, well, if you have TV service, you're going to need this. If you don't have TV service with Verizon Fire, so you just have the internet, then yeah, you could just buy a router. You can get any router you want. You can get something as expensive as this one right here. This is the one I have over here. But I did not pay this price. I got it for the cheap. Thank you, Sasha. I love you. <laughs> but yeah, you could get something as expensive as this if you're a hardcore gamer, or you could get something as cheap as this. AC 1200. It could support gigabit. Something mid-range, I would recommend... Uh, hmm. Something where you don't have to break the bank, I would recommend this one. TP-Link is a very good brand. AC 1750. Very good brand. But yeah. You need a Mocha adapter, and you need a wireless router of your own. I chose this one. But like I said, I got it for cheap but you can get anything you want. I gave you the high-end option. I gave you the, I, I don't even wanna say low-end, but it's good, but it doesn't break the bank. And something mid-range, I would say this one, the Netgear, cost 144. Would be good with this. Now, if you don't wanna use ethernet and you wanna use a wireless connection, I could recommend something like this one. Netgear AC1200 USB adapter. Or if you want something really good to pull in the speed if you have high speed, something like gigabit, you want to get at least 600 to 700 megabits per second, I would recommend this one. I've used it before and it is extremely fast. I'm telling you, it's fast. This is the lower end option. Either one, you're going to be fine. Now, I have my router already. Got to go buy this. I'm gonna go home, connect it, show you guys how it's done. Okay, so I have the Mocha adapter here. Now, this is the Mocha adapter. This is where you would connect your Ethernet port to one of the LAN ports in your router. The direct network here goes from the ONT into this port, and the device would be where this TV box one that's connected to the coaxial would connect to this one right here. Now, I was mistaken before, right? I thought that this thing was a modem because of this coaxial cord that it has in the back. But this is not a modem. They give it a little fancy name, Quantum Gateway, Gateway Router, but it doesn't even say router on it. It just says Quantum Gateway. I'm over here thinking that this thing is a modem. And that's why I thought that you couldn't buy your own. But this is not a modem. This is simply a router. And it's a cheap one at that. I was only getting seven, no, I'm, blah, I said seven. I was only getting 250 megabits per second with this thing right here. Sometimes it'll go to 260. It's not all that good. This is the big boy. This is what I have now. Once again, thank you, Sash. Now, I'm gonna return this. Don't need it. So I'm gonna connect this, and I'm gonna connect this. And I'm gonna show you how it runs. When you try to use your own router without the Mocha adapter, this is the message that you get on the set-top box. Now, you can still watch live TV. Now, I'm going to try to go into the YouTube apps here. This is the error message that you get. You won't be able to use it, so now we got to connect the Mocha adapter. Okay, so the Motorola Mocha adapter is connected right here. So, this right here is the line that goes into the television. It's connected here. ONT is connected to this box also. Both of these are connected to the router. So remember, devices in here, ONT in here, both these ethernet lines into the router. Now we're gonna check if the TV set-top box works. Okay, so we got no message. Now we're going to go into the menu. 
Would you turn that? See if we can go on YouTube. Hey, it's working. Yeah, what? Works, 100%. Okay, last step. We're gonna do a new speed test with the new router, with the Mocha adapter plugged in. We're gonna see if we get above 900 as we were getting with the Verizon Fios router. Okay, getting over 900. Okay, 904. After that, we're gonna try data room. Nine oh four, nine forty two. Now, let's go to data room. ISP that net is good also. Okay, nine forty. So as you can see, we're getting the same speeds that we got with the. Fios router, 948. Mind you, I'm using all Cat7 cables, non-Cat5e cables. 948, 939, gonna do one more. ISP net, where is it? This one, Let's see what we get here. Two milliseconds. Eight, 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 eight. Come on, go to nine, go to nine. Hmm. As you can see, we still get the fiber optic speeds so it all depends on the server. Now we're gonna do a Wi-Fi speed test. Remember I told you guys before with the Fios router, I was getting 250 megabits per second on the download and sometimes 180 on the upload. So we're gonna do a Wi-Fi speed test with the new router. Battery is low, so I'm gonna show you my old test, 602.426. And then I took another test before, 600.430, five millisecond ping. That is fast compared to what I had before very fast fast for wi-fi but i'm gonna take another test for you guys battery's low but i'm gonna see what i get same data room five millisecond ping 300s it can go to 600 but like i said the battery is low it needs to be at least above 80 percent like they say but okay we got 341 Let's see what we get on the upload and that's with the battery low show you how strong this router is 343 Get your own equipment with Fios, guys. I'm telling you, it's worth it.